What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Before we dive in, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who checked out the video on the carbon fiber four inch rocket that I built it went 47,500 feet. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, you can go check it out. It was a really a lot of fun and a super high performance flight, a lot of planning, a lot of plotting and a lot of things had to go right. Unfortunately, just enough of them did that I, everything worked and I got the rocket back. But while that is super fun, I think it only makes sense to follow up my highest performance flight ever with a nice, simple cardboard and plywood rocket, but not just any cardboard and plywood rocket. One of my favorites, this is a rocket I truly believe that everyone should have regardless of your cert level, regardless of what kind of budget you're working with obviously to a certain extent, but it's the Lock Precision Mini Mag. This thing is just so great. It's super light. It's a five and a half inch rocket with quarter inch plywood fins. So it's plenty beefy. It comes with a 38 millimeter motor mount and Taylor says he believes that you can put any 38 millimeter motor in these things and they will be just fine. Any motor that will fit anyway, you'd have to stretch it to do the 38 millimeter Loki K motor and you know how we feel about stretching rockets around here. No go. Yeah, they're just, I mean, it's simple, it's fun, it's beefy. They're pretty affordable. They're like three feet tall. It's just a really, really fun rocket. I've actually never owned one. I built a clone of one for my level one and I got the fin size wrong. So the fan was, the span was small and then I did tip to tip glass on it because I put a 54 in it. Then it was unstable, which was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do, is build ourselves a mini mag. If you're not familiar, um, Taylor and Matt, our buddies from the anti-gravity group, each have a energy drink themed mini mag. Taylor's is Red Bull, so Matt did Monster. Um, so Shane and I, or as you may know, Impostart, each got a mini mag from Lock Precision. Thank you, Mike, for hooking it up for us. And uh, I'm going to do Rain, and Shane, I believe, is going to do a different Red Bull our friend Jonathan also has a bang mini mag that was inspired by Taylor and Matt as well. So yeah, grab a mini mag, paint it like an energy drink, you come join the party. They're fun, affordable, and super versatile. If you're looking to get into high power and get your certifications, level one and level two, right here. So easy, motor deploy, throw a big H or an I in it, then throw a J in it, boom, certified. Super fun, and uh, yeah, let's dive in. All right, first we're gonna go ahead and unopen it. That's actually a, a meme from my old car YouTube channel. Hold on, I'm gonna keep talking. Um, we used to have people send stuff to the P.O. box and then uh, people would send us stuff to the P.O. box and we would open it and I called it unopening once on accident. And uh, that's you know, why we unopen it. What's up, Pasta? I'm still recording, but um, I'm spilling stuff out of the closet, but I need a chair. When are you gonna build your mini mag? Uh, Say it into the mic. I don't know, when I feel like it, I guess. Whack, I'm building mine right now. What Red Bull are you doing? I don't know. Okay. Sorry about all that, mate. I don't know why I put the table so close to my band bandsaw. Nope. Belt sander. Oh, I would like a bandsaw. And a router table. If anyone's taking notes for what I want for Christmas. Or actually, we have a P.O. box now. If anybody wants to send me a router table. <laughs> That'd be, what a chaotic thing to send to a P.O. box. Uh, but if you do want to send us a letter or something, you can check out the P.O. box will be in the description from now on. Um, just remember you're shipping things to California, so be mindful of what is and isn't allowed. But yeah, check it out. This is just like a giant Estes kit. Big old plastic nose cone, big cardboard tube, giant plywood fins. It comes with a shot cord. It comes with a parachute. 38 millimeter motor tube, and it even comes with decals that we're not going to be using. Oh, there they are. I was about to say it comes with everything and then be like, where are the centering rings at? But it turns out I'm just dumb. Oh, they're the lock-in fin centering rings. Cool. Yep, as usual, lock precision fit and finish is super nice. Tube end cuts, super nice. Laser cut, fin slots, everything's just great. 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, this trick that I think I've talked, I must have talked about it on this show before. Um, you just use a damp paper towel to uh, wipe off anywhere there will be bonding happening. I should probably just do the whole tube because I'm going to use some primer that should eat it up pretty good. Uh, but yeah, you just use a moist paper towel and it takes the glassine layer, glossine, I can't remember, I think it's glassine, it's the shiny stuff that epoxy doesn't love to stick to. We're gonna do that to the motor tube. We're gonna sand the centering rings and uh, I'm actually probably gonna go grab a different eye bolt because I don't love that open one and I know I have some lifting eyes. So we'll grab one of those and uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the whole nine. We're gonna do the uh, Mirror Clip Retainers. We're building this thing 100% stock. It's gonna be nice and easy, quick build. It's probably gonna take maybe an hour. We're gonna use five minute hobby epoxy. And we're just gonna build ourselves a rocket. Um, one thing I should note, mini mags fly a little bit better if you just put a tiny bit of nose weight in them. So that's what I am going to do here. Um, they fly pretty good. They just like to on the shorter motors or not as hard hitting motors without a little bit of nose weight, they get a little bit squirrely sometimes. So we're just trying to avoid that as best we can. I'm gonna go get a damp paper towel and uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, check me out. Here's what we were talking about. Just a damp paper towel. You don't want it like dripping, but just enough wet and you're basically sanding it but with a wet paper towel and it gets really sticky for a second and then just like that it's not shiny anymore and it's ready for glue too easy do it around where there will be fillets as well just marked aft and forward on the centering rings which is awesome you can tell though because that's for the uh, motor retainer setup and then the one hole is for your eye bolt up top. And again, let me go check the inventory. All right, a little sandpaper action. Now that everything's sanded, we're gonna start measuring. If you watch my channel, oh wait, no. First, actually what we're gonna do, I am replacing the open eye bolt that comes in the kit with this guy. It's a quarter 20 lifting eye. Oh, let me make sure that's the right thread pitch. I believe it's a quarter 20. Yes, it is, okay. And this just, uh, it's just closed, so. It's really unlikely that you will bend and open an eye bolt, but it's not impossible. So we put this guy in there. I like to throw a little Loctite on any hardware, especially hardware that's going to be deep in the rocket that I pretty much have no shot of ever accessing again. Um, the blue Loctite's usually more than sufficient. If you're like me and all of your cars are either new or foreign, uh, quarter 20. 11 mil socket. Right up next, these are always fun. A little, I think they're just called T-nuts. The backing nuts for uh, our retention system. I'm putting the word aft on the inside. These ones are small enough, I think a rubber mallet should do the job. If you're not on a plastic table, I'm gonna do these on my workbench. Shane's probably in there wondering what I could possibly be doing to make that racket with a cardboard rocket. Maybe I'll just make it flush. That makes it easier. I'm not worried about the uh, thrust being a problem and pushing through the rocket or anything. So I just, if you overhang it a little bit, you get a chance to do a fillet. I also thought about leaving it half an inch overhang just so I could 
you know, put an aero pack on there at some point, but I don't think I need to. It's kind of in the spirit of the Jeep Rock. See, these are the spur of the moment decisions I make all the time. With stuff like this, it's great to not have to, you know, be super calculated. I know that's ironic to say as I'm pulling out a scale to measure five minute epoxy, but shout out to Bryce from Evolution Space. I watched him weigh it out and I was like, you know what? I kind of like that. I'm going to try it. And I did. And since then, I've just been weighing out my five minute epoxy. 2.6, oh, oh, on the dot. I always just kind of pour and eyeball the first one and then just match the other one and off we go. So we hit 1.3, we get 2.6. Trying not to get it super far down on the motor tube, but that's why I wanted to put that fin in and check it out. Cause you do have a little bit of glue clearance. Still. Okay, I always like, when I do a flush ring like this, I just like to put it on some plastic like this. Although usually I prefer it sitting a little flatter than that, but you know, we'll take what we can get here. It should be okay. We have a good amount of extra epoxy, so I'm just gonna kind of do a little fillet around where the fins don't go. Because why not? We're here and we got extra epoxy. Ooh, the big tongue depressor is not the play here. We might just have to go to the finger. I hate the finger in the epoxy, but sometimes it's just what you gotta do. Hovering marked. We still want to be careful here because we don't want to get any epoxy where the fins are going to go. So I'm going to try to keep it as close to the line as possible, which is a little bit difficult with the big giant popsicle stick, but it's okay. We'll make do. Stay up there. Gonna give it a good turn. Now this is important with the lock and fin stuff. You really, no, stop it. You really wanna make sure those fin slots are well aligned. My issue here is that I did get some epoxy. I don't wanna glue this fin in. But I do wanna use it as a reference. It's right in the bottom, perfect. Okay. Use all the fins just to line things up here. Didn't feel like staying in your little slot there, huh? Oh, this is a nightmare. Don't do this. Just measure like a normal person. I mean, we got there eventually, but at what cost, you know? Do not forget to tie your shock cord. Man, oh man. Oh, wow, look, it's got loops. Okay, I'm gonna get a quick link then. I salvaged this quick link from uh, my Alamosa K300 disaster. But this is great because it's a tiny quick link, but these lifting eyes are just small enough that you can get away with this tiny quick link. And then this nice sewn loop in here makes me feel a lot better about uh, the shock cord being in it for the long haul because as one might imagine, although this rocket is big enough that it's a little bit easier, but once everything is glued in, it's not fun to try and get it uh, situated. And I don't know where my adjustable wrench is. So we're using a set of needle nose pliers to tighten that up. Um, some people like to put Loctite on a quick link in that situation. I don't blame you if you do that. I understand why you would, but I don't really think it's necessary. Maybe I'll eat my words on that someday. I wanna try and pack this in the motor tube a little bit chaotically because I don't want it to fall through. The nice thing about the lock-in fin setup 
is that you know right where you got to put your epoxy because it's just going to be I've marked it for you for reference the back and front of the fin slot because duh that's where the fins go and they slide into the slots on the centering ring so we're going to make a pretty healthy batch of epoxy and uh, if we have enough left over and getting the motor mount in goes well, then I will go ahead and glue one of the fins in. I should note that I'm racing the chicken that I'm currently cooking in the kitchen as well. So we got seven, well, 7.04 batch gram, gram batch of epoxy. Nope, I went, went right on by the target. So come on, come on. I got fresh bottles of five minute, but I'm not, Oh, right on the scale. We got some on the scale, some on the inside of the cup, but not down far enough to mix it. It's a good thing the old half and half hobby epoxies are pretty forgiving. We're not off to a good start in terms of doing things quickly though, huh? Let me wipe all this epoxy off my scale. Man, Tub of Towels needs to sponsor my channel. It really comes in clutch. I can say a lot of good things about him. I already do for free, but like if they paid me, I could really do it. And I'm just, I like to put it fairly far down so that the centering ring drags the epoxy up. Not like fairly far down, but maybe half an inch lower than where we're trying to get the epoxy. That way the top centering ring drags it up and we get a nice little fillet going. You gotta be careful with the fin slots. Try not to let it come through the outside of the airframe because you don't want to deal with trying to clean it off the airframe. Oh, it's dripping everywhere. Now what's probably gonna be the easiest course of action as long as I go relatively quick here. First ring in crooked, then you just deal with the repercussions of the back ring. Shouldn't be too bad. There we go. Got them pretty well sanded. And then I like to just, if you can, twist things around a bit. Okay, that's lined up. But uh, just to make sure, we're gonna test fit one of the fins. And I test fit these already off camera, if I'm honest. But everything's pretty snug, but it did go in, which I like. It makes it line up nicely. And there you go. And I'm paranoid. So let's make sure the other fins are lined up too. There's, there's one thing I'm good at, somehow finding a way to mess things up. Okay. That one's good. That one's also good. Now, we'll pick one. See if I have enough epoxy left over. See how this top fillet guy is cooking. Not bad, actually. And since this is the last fin, we'll go with that one, I guess. It's getting pretty thick pretty quick. Just like I did during COVID. I'm gonna try and get some into these fin tabs as well. The ones on the rings. It's for a little extra bonding, huh? It's a good bonding exercise. I'm basically this rocket's dad. Okay. Let me grab the tub of towels. We don't want fillets there yet. And then honestly, I'm probably just gonna come back and do the next two fins at the same time because the lock-in fin thing makes it so nice. All right, all the fins are glued on. I'm sure right about now is the time you're expecting me to say psych and say we're doing something ridiculous. We're putting a 98 millimeter motor mount in this thing, doing tip to tip carbon fiber on the fins and flying it on an M. No, that's not happening. Although my friend Kyle did make a 98 millimeter mini mag and flew to Airfest, it was awesome. 
but you are right. A Rocket Vlogs video just wouldn't be a Rocket Vlogs video without fiberglass or carbon fiber. So that's why I'm gonna tell you all about my new Ridge Wallet. Now I have to admit, since I've been doing a lot of road trips, I have become a front pocket wallet kind of guy, but I've been using a regular old school bulky wallet and it's still a little bit cumbersome getting keys and other things in and out of my pocket. I have been curious about Ridge wallets for a long, long time and now I am all in. This thing is so awesome. You can fit up to 12 cards in here. There's a strap for your cash. There's other attachments like a quick draw so you can put your ID on one side and even an AirTag attachment so you can track it with your iPhone. And of course, when I talked to Ridge about doing this partnership, I asked him for the carbon fiber one. It's so sick, but if carbon fiber is not your thing, they have leather, over 50 different color options in total. The really cool thing about the Ridge wall is everything is just super easy access, right? There's all your cards, all your cash is right there if you have any, which I don't, nobody's surprised by that. It's also great because it's RFID blocking, so people walking by cannot just skim your card numbers, and that legitimately has happened to me before. I was out of town, somebody had skimmed my card number and used a clone of my card to entirely drain my bank account at a Walmart but it wouldn't have happened if I had the RFID blocking Ridge wallet. And uh, like genuinely guys, I don't know how to sell this any more than I can just by saying it legitimately is awesome. Uh, Taylor has been using one for like six years and he's really been trying to get me on the train. I've been on the edge and now I have to say it's so great. I love these pants that have the zipper pocket, the tech wallet or the tech pocket. Awesome, throw my phone and my wallet inside that pocket if I'm gonna go ride roller coasters or do whatever else, it's really, really great. I think one of my favorite parts about the Ridge Wallet is that I was kind of a wallet pack rat or a hoarder, so to speak. I had a whole bunch of stuff that I would just, I've been carrying stuff in my wallet since I was like 10 years old. Legitimately, I had a punch card from a snow cone shack because it was the first thing I ever put in my own wallet. I am dumb and sentimental about things like that. Now it's in a scrapbook along with all the other junk that I just had to keep around. Another thing was my NASA Houston Rocket Club membership card from like 2011 or 2012. I hung on to it, it was cool. It was a way for me to get onto the Johnson Space Center and as a teenager, it was the coolest thing ever. But it doesn't need to stay in my wallet forever. So now it's in a scrapbook full of memories. I have downsized, I have seen the light. Click in the description. The Ridge Wallet is a tagged product for this video. Just click on that tag product in the description and use the discount code YouTube10 for 10% off your Ridge Wallet. Join the gang. They have a lifetime guarantee. It comes with a nice screwdriver and extra screws. It really, really is awesome. And uh, I, I love it. It's, I keep reaching it down being like, oh, did I bring my wallet? But I'm like, yes, I did. That tiny thing in my pocket is my wallet. I genuinely love it. And I think you genuinely will love it as well. Check it out. Pin product in the description, Ridge Wallet, YouTube 10 discount code. Now let's get back to the mini mag. All right, we're gonna tape this guy up for some fillets. Um, I marked it here with the spoon that I'm gonna use. We're just doing simple spoon fillets. The old reliable West Systems with the colloidal silica. Keeping it OG. I actually was gonna just do it with five minute epoxy, but I decided to go with West. That way I can do all of them at once. We started flash curing there a little bit, but it's all right. We're gonna pull the tape off. It started getting real hot, but we still beat it. So call it a win. Fillets all look pretty good. And like I said, I'm gonna come back around and uh, make some final adjustments once it's set up a little bit. The fronts aren't perfectly symmetrical, but it doesn't matter. 
Now, of course, every self-respecting Rocketeer has a giant bowl of ice sitting around. Um, we're gonna put the nose cone in here, just like so, because like I said, these things like a little bit of nose weight. So I'm gonna throw some BBs and some epoxy in here. And the ice is because epoxy is exothermic and it gets quite hot. See how hot this guy's getting, pretty warm. Uh, okay, it's not flashing, flashing though. It's just thickening up pretty quick. That's good to know. Um, I don't want the nose cone to melt. So we put the tip of the nose where there will be epoxy in ice and we put BBs in there and we put epoxy in there. Let's see, let's see how much epoxy we, how much of this fills in the space we need it to, because if we need more epoxy in there to cover the BBs, um, it'll be close. The beautiful thing about these plastic nose cones is you can get the nose weight all the way, all the way in the tip. It's as far forward as you could possibly get it. Okay, this is gonna be a sort of a delicate operation. Let's see if I can handle it. The hole is nice too, because then you can just kind of line her up and she's dropping right in. All right, starting to slow down. Let's take a look in there, see how we're looking. Oh yeah, that covered them all nice. Okay, so here's what we'll do then. The epoxy is viscous, but it should still, the BB should drop right through. So I'll just throw some more in there. Hmm. Taylor said he just checked his rock sim and he had four ounces in there. So maybe let's see if I can get another ounce and a quarter of BBs in there without going past the epoxy. Okay, now we'll let that cure. In the meantime, let's see how this epoxy is doing. And then after this epoxy cures, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do for the nose cone because I love Log Precision and our friends over there. I don't love this. And actually, friend of the channel, Jonathan Gabry, his broke off at LDRS. Uh, so I'll show you my solution for attaching the shock cord to my mini mag nose cone instead of using this little plastic hoop because they break. We'll see how this is looking. Oh, it's setting up pretty quickly. Okay, let's see if we can get away with some manipulation here. All right, a little alcohol on the finger. Oopsie. Mostly my concerns are these edges that we're gonna have to sand down. Um, I did a pretty good job with the masking tape placement though. So there's just this one is a little bundled up right there. I'm gonna keep my eyes out for stuff like that. Stuff like this glob here. And just kind of, whoopsie. Oh no, finger sand those away. Like this too, you can maybe kind of see it. I don't know. I just spread it out a little bit because I didn't want the epoxy to flash cure with it super thick. So this is what I'll do if I have any epoxy on the rocket anywhere. Like there as well. I'll just carefully pull it out, use the alcohol to spread it so thin that we'll be able to just hit it with some sandpaper real quick and it won't be a problem anymore. Obviously with a cardboard tube, you wanna be careful with how wet you're getting things which you can see that I'm a little bit reckless. Okay, so now, did just a little bit of alcohol on the fingers and very, very gently, I'm dragging the leading edges, smoothing them out. I'm gonna use a different finger since I'm dipping straight into the jug. Yeah, just get everything nice and even. I really like doing this on cardboard rockets because it's really easy to sand too much into a cardboard rocket and make your paint job a nightmare. 
Um, if you have like uneven fillets, you can do this, this whole process and just kind of like drag your finger along the fillet like that and smooth everything out. The important thing is not to panic, right? You can always fix whatever you mess up. It's not fun, but you can. And uh, there you go. Now those fillets are as good as I need them to be. And uh, there's a couple little problem areas on some of them here. Grab a big build, build it. That's what I call them when I'm not talking to YouTube. When I talk like a child. Um, big build it. Put a big hole here. All right, we're gonna drill another one roughly in the same spot. You guys know me, I like to eyeball stuff. Try and get it close. Close enough. Now we're gonna take this dowel, feed it through there. Gotta be kind of careful. Get it to cooperate. There you go. Take the dowel off. Then I'm gonna shorten this a good bit. I just wanted to get it through the nose cone first. I'm gonna do her right about there. Yeah, there's a good idea. Punch the camera in. That always works out great for me. All right, we're gonna go the extra mile even. I'm putting a piece of heat shrink on here. All right, so what we're gonna do, tie a nice little knot here, wrap it up nice and tight with some electrical tape. Now, if you wanted to too, since there's a hoop on the end of the shock cord, you could just run the shock cord hoop directly in here and then not have a quick link or anything like that, but I like having everything removable just in case. Okay, and then I just pull her inside. Boom, there you go. Now use that to attach your shock cord to instead of that plastic eye that scares me a little. Ooh, this nylon's interesting. Kind of beefy. Does this have a spill hole? It does have a spill hole. A lot of precision getting some engineering done over there. I'm just gonna put the nose cone or the parachute right on the nose cone quick link. Have it nice and high up at the top there. Get that on there. Tighten her up. And there you have it, folks. That is the build of one of my favorite high power rockets, the Lock Precision Mini Mag. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you think of this sort of uh, one take esque kind of style build. It was a couple of days, but uh, yeah, just you and me hanging out, building a rocket, and having a good time. I'm going to have to put some tape on this nose cone. It's a little loose, and I got to be a little careful, obviously, since these fillets still aren't dry. But uh, that's pretty much it. So join me next time when I show you guys how I paint cardboard rockets. I wanna make this thing as beautiful as I can and as true to the design of the can as I can. Don't forget to click the tag product in the description and join the front pocket wallet gang with my friends from Ridge and uh, get yourself a fun new wallet. You can help me out. My name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a Rocket Vlogs video. Thank you so much for being here. If you aren't subscribed, please press the subscribe button. Click the little bell, gets your notifications going. Thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters and channel members whose names are rolling across the screen ever so gracefully right now. If you wanna see your name on the screen as well as behind the scenes content, early releases on videos and podcasts and everything else I do, go to patreon.com slash Rocket Vlogs or press the join button below. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. I'll see you next time.